back. Yeah. Well said it. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome everyone. This is Critical Mass. We named the show after the critical mass is the minimum amount of matter you need or mass you need to sustain like a nuclear fission reaction. But we also understand that we are the masses who are critical to the revolution. Um, I'm Tisa. I am uh, the International Chief of Science and Technology. I represent Korea. I use they them pronouns. And I am Chief Felix. I am the International Chief of Staff of SciTech. I rep Africa and I use they them pronouns. I'm so excited to be here. Co-host with you, Chisa. I'm really, really excited. All the clips we were watching were wild. Me and Chief Felix and Chief Dio stayed up until like 2 a.m. one night finding material for the show and talking about all the cool stuff we're going to talk about today. So we're super excited to just bring it to all of y'all and really get into it. Yeah, I know. I'm really excited. I know I was just learning about this stuff. This is stuff I've been wanting to learn about for a really long time. So this show is going to be really fun for me, for all of you. I'm so excited for these topics because they are really interesting. <laughs> Also, I feel like when you go on YouTube and we found all of these, they were all hosted like by white people who said that it was other white people that discovered all this stuff. And then there was that one room, remember where at the very end they were like, actually, and by the way, the Aztecs and the Mayas discovered this like probably like 2000 years before all of these other people. So to just really showcase like not only ourselves as like colonized people, but just like this as knowledge that colonized people have always had. Yeah, of course, absolutely. And that's like something we really want to do with SciTech too, you know, it's like remind colonized people that this science has always been ours. It's always something that we can understand and the economy makes it so unbelievably confusing. Um, so we're going to break down some really cool topics today because they really, um, it is our science and it is something that everyone can understand. And it's also really cool. Like who doesn't love science? It's incredible what science can be for the people. Um, and we've got a taste of that at SciTech. Lay on that. Land back. All right, so before we get into it, we are going to walk through a little bit about what Black Hammer does and our four principles of unity. So let's get into it. All right, so Black Hammer Organization is the biggest, baddest, anti colonial revolutionary organization. We are made up of poor and working class colonized people united under four principles of unity. One, we believe the colonized proletariat should have dictatorship over our lives, labor, land, and resources. Two, we believe all colonized proletariat are equal, no matter gender, sexuality, age, skin tone, body type, location, religion, mental slash physical differences, and slash or bi, bi slash multiracial identity. Three, we believe all the problems the colonized face are from colonialism and the submissive neocolonialists that are within our colonized nations. And four, we believe that the colonized proletariat is the only true proletariat. Only through our leadership can white power, capitalism, colonialism, imperialism, and all of its symptomatic offspring be smashed. All right, land back. Land back, uh, and those are our four principles of unity that inform everything that we do. Um, this is why we've been able to pass out almost a million masks worldwide. This is why we're able to liberate the land for Hammer City. This is why we have chapters all over the world that go out and serve their communities every single day of the week. And just getting into a little bit more about what SciTech does through these four principles of unity. Um, we're working on a bunch of different projects right now. Um, one of them is our, our water project. So a lot of you probably know we had a member Chief Eyes who was murdered by the poison water that was in his community. And when we heard about that, you know, colonized people, every day they see their people dying, but it's not often they see people doing something about it. And we know we had to do that in Chief Eyes' memory and not only for Chief Eyes, our comrade who we love, but for the millions and billions of other colonized masses of the world who will die if they don't have clean water. And we're not a charity. We don't do that just to pat ourselves on the back, but to give them an opportunity to join the revolution. Like a person cannot join the revolution if they are killed by poison water. Um, so we're fundraising tonight for that project. Our goal is $500. So I want to see that coming in in the comments literally right now. Like our people are dying right now. We are building these water filters right now. We need the funds for them right now. It's urgent. Revolution is urgent. Building up scientific dual contending power for our people is urgent. 
We're also working on a coding academy. TPT has been putting in work, getting a Python coding academy together. Um, our IT team does a lot of projects that we can't share the ins and outs of, but trust and believe that they are building up information technology, dual contending power for our people. We can't do any of this without the funds. Um, you know, and this is stuff that I feel like when you when you spend your money on something like food on the colony. Oh, land back! Thank you so much, QAnon Smash White Power, forty four dollars. That is beautiful. We really appreciate you. Fifteen dollars, Chief Oju. Thank you so much, Chief Oju. We gotta have you on the show one of these days. I love the little after party thing you did with the little science show for the kids. That was so beautiful. But yeah, um, land back, Chief Nepal. Thank you for five dollars. Yeah, on the colony when you. $25 in reparations. Yes, if there are some white folks in those comments, run those reparations. You know you're on stolen land. You know you benefit from the genocide of all colonized people. This is how you overturn it. Wash that blood off your hands. Get on the right side of history and really like put it, like put your put your weight into it. Like, you know, put some skin in the game. Like, like all you stole all that anyway. Give it back. Um, anyways, Chief Felix, you want to talk some about what it's been like um leading and working with the water project? Oh yeah, absolutely. So it has been absolutely incredible seeing how quickly science can move when it's not being bogged down by the colony. Um, and I think uh, these water filters that we're giving out to colonized people really is a tribute to that. I think it's taken us from like seeing the POA to actually having our first prototype finish. It's been like an incredible, I think like three or six months. I don't know, I think Chief, so you can remind me. Um, but that, I mean, when have we ever seen science move that quickly? It's always bogged down with so many papers and tests and all sorts of things. And we can still do that and have that organization and use science for the people. And so often science is used uh, to hurt us, it's used against us, um, it's ripped away from us. Um, and to be able to reclaim that, um, and like I said, show the people what we can do and bring the masses in, because not it's like not only for us, but like Chief was saying, we have a code academy, we know everyone can learn these skills, should learn these skills if they want to. Um, so being able to provide that for all colonized people is absolutely incredible. It's unlike anything you can ever get at the colony. It brings me so much joy. I love science so much. Um, yeah, so I want to see a few more for SciTech. Okay, $5 from Frederico. Thank you so much. I think I saw a few other ones too. I saw I Chief Gunn. Yeah. I saw Chief Sante. I saw Sergeant Bear. Sergeant Bear donated us a 3D printer. We're so excited with what we're going to do with that. Also, Chief Felix, we got $10 in reparations from 11 from our reparations core. Thank you, comrade. Also, this is crazy. I don't know exactly how many months either. Thank you so much, Kim Babe. Uh, two dollars. I like the penguins. But what's crazy is you talked about how fast science can move when it's not like in the vice grip of the colony. And SciTech itself, I don't know how long we've been working on the water project. I think probably four months, but a month in Black Hammer is like a year because of all we do. But SciTech itself, like as a committee, has only existed since January 1st, since the beginning of this year. So to see all of this built up from the ground, from absolutely nothing, shows the brilliance of the colonized proletariat and the colonized masses. They're ready for revolution. They're ready to use science for revolution. So we got 25 viewers right now. Um, make sure that you're sharing um, to get more and more people in the room. Thank you so much, Chief Savvy. I miss you, Chief Savvy. And um, make sure that you're donating. If we have $20 from everyone in here right now, we hit our goal immediately. Um, but also, if you can't do $20, if you can do $5, if you can do $1. There have been times where I've donated $1 to Hammer City because um, that's all I had. And that still pushed us forward to our goal to the point that we are approaching 100K. So every little bit um, counts. And if you don't have the ability to donate right now, we all live in the colony. Um, thank you so much. $25 more in reparations from Executive and Reset. We appreciate y'all. If you don't have the ability to do that, like right now, share. A share is worth a donation for sure because it's going to have more people see it, more people donating, more people joining, more people in the revolution. It's win-win. It's super easy. Um, and yeah, anything you want to add to Felix? Yeah, I just wanted to say, I recently thought about when I joined uh, some comrades, we got together because we were uh, losing one of our comrades, Chief Sunite, to a different chapter. And I actually joined right in the beginning, uh, January 2021. So to see all of this, to join SciTech right when I feel like it was created, um, I've been wanting to do revolutionary science forever um, because I've always known that it's just trash on the colony. So yeah, it's it's incredible to be able to do this and like we want to give this out to more people, see more donations because we know this is something 
that all colonized people need. We know it's a contradiction that exists everywhere. Um, the colony is always using science against us. So SciTech is just incredible for that. Oh yeah, I'm seeing you, Fanny Sharon. Thank you so much. And I saw Karma G donated. Thank you so much. And yeah, y'all, like this is really urgent. Like it's really urgent and it's really like not something colonized people get to see. Like I was saying earlier, like all we see is death. We never see anyone like really do something about it, put skin in the game and like not just do, but organize as like an entire collective, as an entire organization. So we really want to push this goal. We'll be reminding you later um, because, you know, this is not some thing where it, it's important because this will be given back to the masses a hundredfold. Like we understand on the colony, like you buy a meal, you eat the meal, it's gone. Or you buy some BS, like, it's gone. And it's also all from stolen resources and your own people's exploited labor. This is something that you can feel good about giving your money to. It's going to be given back to you in revolution a million fold. So I want to see a couple more donations or y'all not going to hear get to hear about the parallel universes. You better be in the parallel universe where you donate to SciTech. Money in reparations. All right. Sarcophagus. Thank you. Shared. Sweet. All right, I wanna see him keep rolling in. Thank you so much to everyone who's donated so far. We really appreciate it. All right, I think, you think people are ready to get into this first topic? I think people are ready. <laughs> I think people, I know I'm ready. I know I'm ready. I mean, I think it's pretty interesting. <laughs> All right, All right. so the moment everyone's waiting for, what else is out there? Parallel universes, multiverses, what exactly is going on. So before we can really even get into this topic, we have to remind ourselves what a universe is. And historically we think about a universe as like this all encompassing thing. It's all the planets, all the stars, all of us, all the ants that we see, all the small micro, um, micro bacteria, all sorts of things. Um, but what if we could have multiple universes existing at once? What would that look like? what would all of those decisions be? And that is a parallel universe, is considering all of those decisions, all of those possibilities, um, really every single type of uh, physical universe uh, that could exist. What do you think about that, Chisa? I think it's pretty interesting. <laughs> I think it's really interesting too. And I remember before I was a revolutionary, I would look at these videos and the conclusion they always have is, well, there are multiple universes, so clearly nothing matters. And that's such, I think, a colonizer like viewpoint of it. Um, we'll get into later just like the miracle of life. And I know CIC had um, a state of the hammer probably a few months ago talking about how improbable it is that everything in this universe was exactly right to give birth to life. I think that gives extra meaning to us. Like, yeah, there are other universes, but this is the one that we're in and the one that we're in needs a revolution for the colonized masses of the world. Um, and also, I think it's crazy to think, people always say the craziest part is like a crazy parallel universe where, you know, humans never existed or where dinosaurs still exist or where time doesn't exist at all. It's crazier to me to think about ones that are just like a tiny bit different. Like you have one more or less hair on your head and then that's an infinite number of universes because you could have infinitely more or less hairs on your head. Or maybe I'm sitting one inch to the left or one inch to the left of that. And it just, you go down into this rabbit hole and it's really, it's wild to think about. Yeah, absolutely. I'm seeing some people are saying parallel universe where colonialism doesn't exist. They think they glitch into them all the time. We're gonna get into that a little bit later. Are you existing in one right now? Who knows, maybe you are. But yeah, there is an infinite amount of parallel universes. And if we were to consider all of them, that set would be called the multiverse. Um, and it is an uncountable infinity, which is not a small infinity, um, which I think is really interesting. Um, but now we need to talk a little bit about how these universes are even created and go back to like the big thing and all of that. So we have a little bit of a video to explain that real quick. Um, so let's cue that up. All right. About 13.8 billion years ago, give or take, this tiny point started expanding at a crazy speed. Atoms were formed and then stars and galaxies. All this expansion never really stopped. It just slowed down. To this day, galaxies keep moving away from each other as the space fabric between them is being stretched. While this is happening, other universes pop up into existence. 
Some of them have no atoms, galaxies, or living beings because they may be expanding or collapsing way too fast. But there must be others that are more like our universe, with many alternate versions of you and me. As long as it's possible for life to evolve, it'll continue to do so. Just like there's an infinite number of combinations of particles and universes, there's an infinite number of possible physical laws ruling in those universes. In one, for instance, electrons are much heavier than here. Energy behaves differently, and gravity is much stronger than in our world. The possibilities are limitless. The possibilities are limitless. What do you think, Chief Felix? Yeah, I love how that video ends so much because the possibilities really are endless. I mean, when we open up the idea of parallel universes, multiverses, it means that like our particular universe isn't unique. I mean, people always think about our laws of gravity, um, you know, how we see color, all of that is really particular. And it is, like um, you were saying earlier, Chief, so like it does require a particular uh, combination to make sure those things work. But there could be, you know, an infinite number of those combinations existing right now in parallel universes. Damn bad. And someone, I think it was Comrade Black Advo, yo, was like, um, that means something about like, that's why, you know, we have maybe deja vu and experiences like that. Everyone has a twin. Um, we're going to get into later about like, can't we observe other universes from within our own universe? And a lot of people say they feel like they shift universes. Like a lot of people use that to explain, all right, let me not go on a rant about this because I, I get very passionate about it. Some of the Mandela effects, like, I know the Bear Sea Bears was spelled a certain way. I also know that the movie, I forget what it's called, it has Shaq in it, he's a genie. That movie existed, I watched it a million times, but then it actually doesn't exist. Some people believe that that is like a split in the universe, a shift from one universe to another, and you can't, and that that's the only way to explain why the mass consciousness of people remembers things differently than they actually are. It's named after the fact that people thought Nelson Mandela was dead and um, then like later found out, oh, he, or that he died in prison, but he actually was in prison and then died later in 2015. Um, and yeah, well, Nelson Mandela was a sellout. We stand Winnie Mandela, not Nelson Mandela, but that's an example. That's what they named it after. What do you think, Chief Felix? What do you think about the Mandela effect? Oh, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know much about the Mandela effect, um, but I think anything is possible. So who knows? Um, I was really enjoying looking at all the different possible universes people <laughs> were coming up with. A universe without bleach demons, that one was funny. I know uh, Omni Chalce had a comment that came up that kind of cracked me up. <laughs> but yeah, I wanna see more. Um, yeah, what do y'all think these universes could look like? Uh, because that is what we're gonna get into next. This idea um, of superposition and can we experience superposition in real life and how that kind of expands into parallel universes. So I think a really good example of this is uh, the double slit experiment, uh, which we have a really nice video that goes into that explanation. Uh, so let's walk through that. Yeah, I remember when I first watched this video, I was like, this is ridiculous, there's no way. But there's proof in our real world. Superposition is the idea that quantum objects can be in two different states at the same time. It seems like a crazy idea and something we'd never observe, but we do indirectly with the double slit experiment. Fire individual electrons through two slits at a screen, and the pattern you see is not just the sum of electrons going separately through one slit and the other slit. It is an interference pattern we are forced to conclude that a single electron somehow goes through one slit and the other slit simultaneously. This is superposition. Of course, it's easy to understand superposition with waves. They are spread out in space. And it's clear how the peak of a wave from one slit cancels with the trough of the wave from another slit to produce the interference pattern. And luckily, we know that when we're not looking, electrons are represented by a wave, the wave function. The double slit experiment then is concrete evidence that this wave enables individual electrons to pass through both slits at the same time. So superposition is on solid ground. All right, that video is so cool. Yeah, I saw someone in the comments say, is this Schrodinger's cat? And this is exactly Schrodinger's cat. Um, this is where Schrodinger's cat comes from. It comes from thinking about this idea of electrons. Can electrons exist in two places at once? What would that look like on a larger scale outside of a quantum scale? Because it's something we can see on this quantum level. Um, but I think it's really good to think about like other examples of this. Like, how do you kind of think about Schrodinger's cat, Chisa? I don't know if that cat's dead or alive. No, I'm just kidding. But um, 
I think breaking this down, because the first time I saw it, I was like, what? But basically it means that things, anything down to some of the smallest observable things, meaning like an electron can be in two states or more at once. So think about it as like, you have like, let's say this vape, okay, it's pink, but it's also simultaneously blue. And then the Schrodinger cat is the same thing, but it introduces the additional variable of the thing being observed. So not only is this pink, but also blue, but I, by the act of observing it, make it turn into being pink or blue. And that's what Schrodinger's cat is. The idea is that the cat is in the box. It's simultaneously in the two states being dead and alive. And it doesn't become one or the other until you open the box and look at it and say, okay, the cat's dead or the cat's alive. And that's wild because if like an electron, one of the smallest things in existence can do that, everything is made up of electrons. Like electrons are in atoms. That means bigger things can do it because everything they're made of is doing it which means because an electron determines what a molecule is so there's a bunch of things that determine what an atom is right so you have an atom it's got nu nuclear nuclei oh my god it's got uh what are they called oh my god please help please me. yes a nucleus thank you <laughs> made of protons and neutrons the number of protons and neutrons determine what it is but also the amount of electrons and how they are arranged so if the electrons are just switching it up like two things at once it means the whole molecule the atom is two things at once which means the molecules made out of the atoms are can be like because if one thing can be two things at once then that becomes that squared and then it's just anything can be anything at the end of the day it's wild what do you think chief felix oh yeah i mean it's this exact concept i mean i, I can't believe i'll just stop right here. i can't believe we can see this in our actual life like we can really see electrons existing in two places at once like we were just forced to conclude that um, and like you were saying, like that can easily be expanded into larger things, into cats, into ourselves, into universes, into planets. Um, and that's exactly what like parallel universes, multiverses is, is all of these states, all of these quantum states existing at the same time, because they do, we've observed that they do on a quantum level. So who's to say they can't also exist on more of like a macro scale, which is really like, oh my God. <laughs> And I see some of the comments. Karma Jaybird said the Schrodinger concept really helped them understand their gender as indigenous and two-spirit. That's beautiful. Not one, not both, either, neither. And I think even the concept of observation is interesting in the context of like the gender thing too. Whatever I'm observed as, that doesn't make me what I am. Also, I see some people being like, uh, this confuses me. That, it confuses everybody. Like it confuses the scientists who discovered this were confused <laughs> like because it's just sort of this paradigm breaking thing that forces you to confront how you see like reality so it's like i know i want to say it's supposed to be confusing but like if you don't get it like you're not alone like it's not because you're dumb like it's not something that is supposed to be gotten that's why it's like so like it's like supposed to f with your mind yeah absolutely and i mean they really did have to change some rules of science um, and something that we needed to think about and change is how we think about gravity, or at least used to think about gravity before we really started thinking about multiple universes and parallel universes. Uh, because before we used to think about gravity as acting on an object instantaneously, like in an infinitesimally small part of an object, um, just like very small part of an object, um, gravity just like pulls that force down. But instead we need to think about space and time and gravity differently um, we need to introduce this concept of space time um, and i think there's a really nice video that gets into that and how this relates to opening up to uh multiple universes and parallel universes so let's pull that up and see what we can get into all right i'm so excited for this this one oh man this is great Albert Einstein revolutionized our understanding of gravity and laid the foundation for the many scientific and technological breakthroughs that came after him. In November of 1915, Einstein made one of the most profound intellectual breakthroughs in the history of physics when he developed the full implications of his ideas on gravitation into his general theory of relativity. Departing from Isaac Newton's conception of gravity as a force transmitted instantaneously over distances, Einstein positioned that gravity operated as less of a force and more of a field which distorted space and time around massive objects. Thanks to Einstein's general relativity theory, we can describe gravity by attributing it to the curvature of space-time that occurs in the presence of massive bodies. 
The stronger the gravity, the more space-time curves, and the slower time itself proceeds. Time goes faster the farther away you are from the Earth's surface compared to the time on the surface of the Earth. This effect is known as gravitational time dilation. All right, gravitational time dilation. These are things you have to start thinking about. And I also really love that animation of how it shows gravity really acting as this field. Because when we're thinking about these massive objects, when we're thinking about these planets, we need to start thinking about these things. Um, and I think it's really important to note this idea of superposition, which we just saw a little bit ago when we were uh, looking at the electrons and how these waves kind of work together. Um, it's the same thing with gravity on this larger scale. Um, and it creates these ripples, again, in space Space time which splits and creates parallel universes and that is how we get to this idea we need to think about gravity differently it's this field that affects these massive bodies how are you feeling about that Chisa? <laughs> first of all you know i have to call it out I, albert einstein did not discover that indigenous people specifically indigenous people in turtle island and patamama knew that since the beginning of time there's like texts of them knowing that i'm sure african and asian people knew that too but to me, this like links back to colonialism too, because I think the idea of time is linear rather than like part of a space time field that affects how things move through space and time. The idea of time is linear is a colonial construct. And I feel like it's made that way so that, um, because time is only seen as how much time to extract, how much, how much labor from it to keep the colony going. And I think that that, Colonialism has robbed us of so much. It's robbed us not only of our land, lives, labor, and resources, but also of our relationship with time. Like if we could see time as something that we're just moving through, rather than something that's constantly taking us, telling to get back, telling us to get back to work, then we would have such a like more whole view of the universe and who we are and how we relate to time itself. Like, and I think if we saw time is less of a commodity the way colonialism tells you it is we would do better with our time and let's be like constantly not be as constantly stressed about time i think that even plays into the colonial idea that the older you get like the worse like it's bad to get older like i turn 28 soon like people are like, oh you're almost 30 like yeah i'm almost 30 and i'm a revolutionary and i'm gonna be free by the time i'm 30 and like the my early 20s were awful <laughs> <laughs> like I was homeless for most of them. I think we don't even know how corrupted our understanding of time is because of colonialism. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I know Chief Chicha had a comment that I wanted to see um, colonized brilliance and understanding the universe. Yeah, imagine how much we would know about the universe if colonized people's brilliance was never interrupted. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's something you know that kind of helps me going right now. I do think about parallel universe me, parallel universe you, um, and kind of what's that what's what that's like um, and that we can get back to it because it is us. This parallel universe is a part of us. It's it's exactly us. Um, and we have to remind ourselves that it's something that we've always been able to do. Um, we just have to make the right decisions, get pulled into the revolution, like joining Black Hammer, joining SciTech, uh, being a part of this anti-colonial science, uh, because how else are you going to, you know, really get this understanding of the universe, um, except for right here at Black Hammer. <laughs> Land back 100% unite. That was laid out really beautifully. And yes, I'm a Leo. Also, this is a fire sign of uh, supremacy office because Chief Felix is what, a triple Aries? Quintuple. I have five Aries in my chart. <laughs> <It's> ridiculous. <laughs> so much fire. Putting fire to these colonizers. Yeah. So much fire. That's so chaotic. My Aries is rising, or no, my moon is Aries, and my oh, second yeah. period is rising. But me and SG, Uncle, we have the same big three. They're just scrambled up. They're also, he's also a triple fire sign. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, he was like, yeah, I am. Uh, I do a lot of like fires just like in my head, doing science, uh, coming to these workouts, you know, so I can get out some of that fire energy that I have. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, when I'm thinking about these ripples in time space and every, you know, decision that I'm making right now, um, and really how that can have an impact on us and in the future of like doing our action items, Chief, so how do you think doing our action items would affect the universe? I think every <laughs> time you decide whether or not you do your action item, you split the universe into one universe where you do your action item and one universe where you didn't do your action item. And the one where you did, the colonized masses are free and the one that you didn't, 
we suffer 600 more years of colonialism. So you better not split your action items. You better do the, uh, you better not split the universe. You better do your action items. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I saw Chico Paul a little earlier say, I feel like I'm in them right now. Every time you do them, you teleport to an incredible new parallel universe because we're pushing space time that much farther. Uh, so make sure you're doing them uh, because it is just that important. You could be breaking down space time <laughs> and that's why you should do your shadows. Exactly. That's why you should do your shadows. <laughs> You said in a meeting, yeah, that's why that's why we're here for the show. To use science in a meeting, we are, you know, historical dialectals, materialists. We are all scientific. We bring that into our meetings. Um, and this is, we're just laying out the science right here for y'all. It's always been here. I see on Twilight said they're going to go crosses off right now. That's beautiful. Action items are like a trophy. Every time I cross off an action item, I'm like, yeah, I did that. So that's how I see it. And I think too, like I was saying earlier, when we talk about, you know, all this splitting of the universe, multiverse, other universes, um, colonizer logic like always like delves from that. And for some reason, it's like one to immediately, their immediate conclusion is everything is meaningless, so nothing matters. And I think that's whack. What do you think, Chief Felix? <laughs> I do think that's whack. I mean, we're seeing right here how important everything is. Every decision, every thought that's in your head. I mean, that electron wants to go in two spots at once, so it's in two spots at once. The decision is like, which spot do you want to be in right now, you know? So it really, it makes like every decision that we make, everything that we do, again, every action that we do, really just that much more important for liberating the masses and for everyone else. Thank you, Barry. Yeah, we got this universe free so that we can liberate others. Um, so every time we do anything, um, like I said, we're going into another parallel universe. We really are just that one step more, uh, more free. So. And me and Chief Felix were talking uh, the other day, like we want to be like universe shifters. That like once we win liberation for like this universe, we're gonna like shift around and like be in all the revolutions and collect them like pokeballs. Yeah, I want to be in a universe that's just like all upside down. Like possibilities are endless. Like I want to like walk on a ceiling. Like everything's upside down. Like we like right in the other direction. Like that'd be really fun. Like just hang out there for once in a while. <laughs> we gonna get free universe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Can I get a hashtag in the comments? Hashtag free the universe. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I do like that. Let's see more of that. Yeah, free the universe. Uh, because the universe needs freeing, and we can do it right now. By joining Black Hammer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so these ripples, I mean, when I first was thinking about space time, I mean, it did take me a second uh, to see how I felt, uh, but it also made me think about like what else can really be out there. Like I said, we exist this way because of the specific way the atoms decided to come together when everything was mixing, uh, but we could have mixed in a different way uh, that can make humans look totally different. Maybe not even humans, maybe aliens, I don't know. Any thoughts on that? I'm not sure. I think we about, I want to go to a universe where I have four arms like General Grievous, first of all. But I say, I don't know, we got to we gotta get in this next portion to find out. We said, what else is out there? We talked about what else could be out there in other universes, but we don't even understand what's, what's out there in our own universe. And I think we're going to get into that, looking at some like declassified documents, some footage of UFOs. Are they UFOs? I don't know. We're about to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. So has there been any proof? I know proof, I feel like, tends to drop at some suspicious time. So I know this video that just came out is a pretty recent one. I want to look at this one and talk about it a little bit, see what other examples have come up before. Um, is it real? Is it not? Let's see this video, because, yeah, you know, who knows? All right. I mean, I don't know. I feel like these videos are always so grainy and tough to see. <laughs> that could be anything. That could be a sunflower seed that someone threw at somebody's head. It really could be. It really could be. And, you know, it made like all sorts of headlines. When I looked it up, it was like, this is so recent. That video came out like a couple of weeks ago, apparently. And people were like, new proof. Look at what just happened. And I'm like, <laughs> but I mean, we're talking about parallel universes right now. Um, do I think that they're out there? I mean, I'm not sure. I've seen more free the universes. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, what do you what do you say, Hidden? But you thought it was just a sunflower seed. <laughs> I think regardless of whatever that was, it wasn't, I think aliens exist. I think they probably think we're aliens. I think it's ridiculous to think that we're the only type, only anything in the universe that has conscious 
And that's cra- like, is it? That's crazy. I feel like space is too big for us to meet with aliens unless they got tech they would ensure they could remain completely inspicuous if they show shoes. Maybe they are out there and they don't want to deal with us because we haven't got this revolution popping yet. And they don't want to come here with colonizers effing up the whole world. And they drive by, they're like, that looks like trash. Let's come back and like, well, do you say you you said Chief Felix? You were like you would come back in twenty light years when when the revolution was already won, but I think these are dropped at really like you said interesting times, like colonial propaganda times. For example, so y'all know how the CIA claims that there's a period of time after which they declassify everything because the people deserve to know, um, and so last batch of UFO declassified like footage they dropped. Not this one, but the one before this. They dropped a bunch of alien stuff at once, as well as some documents about like other dimensions, meditating under other dimensions, space shifting, mind reading, and stuff like that. Interestingly enough, they dropped it at the same time they dropped the documents that exposed that they were involved in the assassination of Patrice Lumumba, the uh, revolutionary leader of the Congo. I think they use this kind of stuff to like make people focus on that part of what they're declassifying instead of the BS colonial genocide they're committing around the world. And I would not be surprised if they, they're covering up something with this too. Oh yeah, I know I wouldn't be surprised at all with the amount of things that are going on right now. <laughs> Oceans on fire, all sorts of things. Um, I was just laughing the other day, like I was watching SpongeBob episodes, laughing that like I would never see, you know, fire underwater. And now here we are seeing fires underwater because of this colonial mess that we're in right now. Uh, so I think absolutely aliens could be like, the Earth's a little messy right now. We know that in just a few more splits of the universe, few more actions and feeling will be even closer to where we need to be. But yeah, always dropped at suspicious times and also dropped in a way that's like, the United States is always on like the cutting edge of science, always has like the best telescope or something, can see things, but really they're always like the last ones to know anything. So the fact that they drop the anything first, like I went to Cleveland first for anything. Like I <laughs> first in the worst, first at being the absolute worst. Should I say the thing, you know the thing I told you that I might get canceled for? I might <laughs> see it. Should I say I don't know. I don't think maybe you should say it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say it. I believe the first moon landing was fake. Like, seriously, I believe that it was fake. And people are like, what? People act like I'm so crazy for saying this. But it's not even for a specific reason of, like, people will say, oh, there's no weather on the moon, but the flag was waving. Or they'll say, you know, um, the, the footprints would or wouldn't still be there. Or the footage looks fake. Or it looks like they filmed it. I don't care about none of that. I don't care about none of that. I just know the United States of America lies and is literally the foundation of this illegitimate state is lies and genocide. So do I think the nation that killed 20% of the population of my homeland, enslaved African people into chattel slavery, probably eats the faces off of babies, like murdered indigenous people to get this land? Do I think they would lie about landing on the moon? Like, hmm, let me think about it. It's <laughs> not that great, like. I don't know. But yeah, people come to saying that. You don't even need to think about it. Like, I don't even have to think about it. Like, I like I don't even have any thoughts. Like, they didn't even have any thoughts. Like, I, I doubt it when the moon was going on. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, go on ahead, say it, get can't support. Who even cares? Um, yeah. <laughs> Wait, can I see that comment that was just up everyone else on the moon? Um, I don't know, that one looked interesting. Maybe I didn't say that. That's fine. Yeah, the true everyone else went to the moon, but not the U.S. Yeah, everyone else did go to the moon. The news was like, oh, my God, we have to be so quick. Like, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they were lying. Yeah, they lie all the time. And it was 1969. It was a great year for them to lie. Exactly. A great year for them to lie. They want to distract you from it. They always do this stuff when it's like a really suspiciously good time for them to distract everyone in times when revolution is always really possible when the people are always looking for something they're like oh no look at this we're crazy thing like you should be paying attention to these aliens that could like calm down at any moment like calm down to the comedy like we know these things and it's like no what about y'all the alien nation colonizing our land lives labor and resources maybe focus on that <laughs> but anyway t felix 
let's forget about these alien colonizers and talk about the cool type of aliens that aren't hueless and eat mayonnaise for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Do you think alien lives exist in parallel universe? If so, do you think, what do you think they're like? Do you think they look anything like us? I want to say yes. And I'm incredibly curious to see what they would look like. I feel like it could look like anything because there really is an infinite amount of possibilities. Um, so it, it's tough for me to speculate because I feel like anything I speculate could be correct. And I think that's what like the joy and like thinking about parallel universes is. I feel like even decisions that like I don't even know I'm making, like parallel universe me is making, that maybe created like all sorts of other aliens or something. Like, I don't know. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Not a single doubt in my mind. And I want to see, I mean, what do y'all think? Is it possible, not possible? I want to see too. I want to see them comments. Here's this comment. <laughs> Deep Hindu said everything exists. That's true. That's that's one hundred percent true. And someone said, I think they might look some like us. Some might look entirely different. Yeah, that's wild too. Because what if they just have like one less finger, one more finger? I mean, that's infinite aliens right there. Number of fingers because there's an infinity number of numbers. There's an infinity amount of aliens. Chief Oju says they will all look like whatever the environment needed. If they're balls of gas, then they're balls of gas. That's true. That's true. Do you think, Chief Felix, that there are balls of gas aliens that have a consciousness? They're like, have... Oh, yeah. I mean, jellyfish are just like, <laughs> just like energy floating around. So I don't know why <laughs> that couldn't exist. It's just like balls of gas, if not water. So absolutely, absolutely. And I want to see hashtag alien comrades in the comments. We know that there are alien comrades out there supporting us, supporting what we're doing. <laughs> But yeah, Paul's a guess. Alien. Because they would definitely be on our side. I mean, maybe they have their own revolutionary struggles. Maybe there's petty boo aliens. You know how like, you know, Asian people get the 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 uh surgery to make their eyes look like colonizers. Maybe the aliens is like, my ball of gas is like <laughs> too small. I'm gonna get a surgery to look more like the oppressor ball of gas aliens. I it could be anything. It could literally be anything. But I believe that the masses of them will be on our side. I wanna talk real quick about like colonialism and space exploration too. Cause I know we had talked about this earlier too, Felix. What do you think about the way that space exploration is done on the colony? Um, it's boring and it's just used as a way to extract more from these potential universes um, exclusively for um, Cracker's benefit. So I think that's terrible. Of course, like again, what Juju was saying, you really can only see what the universes can hold under um, under a colonized dictatorship, uh, which is the principle of unity number one. Because other than that, I feel like if we'll see these universes, everything will just be extracted. I mean, there'll be time, hopefully they can jet light years away from us or something. Um, but yeah, the way they do space exploration right now, yeah, more alien comrades, yeah, and they'd absolutely be on our side. Maybe when they do that, then all the alien comrades would come out of all their little universes, and then we get like a really cool space fight. That'd be cool. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. That would be super cool. That's why I'm excited for SciTech. You know, like we've had, you know, build the, the finishing of our reverse osmosis water filtration prototype in half a year, under half a year, like four or five months the building up of dual contending information technology power in half a month. I know we're going to the moon, like, and I know we're going to explore space, like, and I don't think it might be that long until we do. And it's going to be super cool because we're not going to be doing it just to see what it is out there we can colonize. I remember, I don't remember if it was Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, but they're the literal exact same thing. So who cares? It might've been Bill Gates. They're all the same thing. Who cares? They're all colonizers. They're all really ugly too. One of them's wife just left them. I don't know. That's their mess. It's doesn't have anything to do with me. But one of them was trying to like figure out how to mine the moon. It's like, not only are y'all like savages that can only rape, loot, conquer, and kill, but you're also like not very smart. Like we need the moon. Like that's part of the gravitational pull on us that keeps earth where it's supposed to be. They do it even at their own. And now their thing is they want to be, I think Elon Musk and then some other white guy are trying to be in a contest to be the first person in space. Like y'all are not gonna, like I was reading up, it's hard work to be in space. Like the one guy who was in orbit on the ISS, I guess for like a year, he came home and immediately retired because it's difficult. Like it's like a 50 step protocol just to poop in a way that's not gonna kill you out there. And they're constantly doing maintenance and they're constantly doing labor. Elon Musk doesn't do labor, he extracts labor. Ever since like his, just like all of his colonizer ancestors did to loot all of those emeralds out of South, 
Africa, quote unquote South Africa, but we know it's lasagna, to get him his riches that he sits on today. So if they go out there, they're probably gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> not just die like die expeditiously it's like the minute you get up there you're like jesus christ this is so challenging and also just like dealing with the effects of like not like gravity like i like i just can't even like think about that um <laughs> and just like being warped in space and time like we talked about uh gravitational time dilation like it gets kind of funky out in space it's really cold and like you said it's just absolutely terrible it's not it's not fun very interesting i feel like colonized people could do something interesting um, we would. <laughs> Can I get a hashtag hammers in space? Because it's going to be cool. T Felix, you coming? I want to go. Are you coming with me? Oh, yeah, or are I'm you going. just going to? Okay. Because I was like, that would be messed up if you, like, you know, help build it and everything. And then I was about to go, and you're like, all right, let me know how it goes. <laughs> and I just, like, watch you all. I'll just do all the computations from the ground. <laughs> that was <be> so funny. Could <laughs> you <laughs> funny? What if? What if it didn't work? No, How would you like deal with the survivor's guilt? <laughs> yeah, I want to see hammers in space. I want to see that hashtag. Hashtag hammers in space. We're going to space. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I would go up there. I would go up there. I'd figure it out. I'd do the calculations from space. It's fun. Um, and I know we'd have an incredible IT team up there helping us as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. We would be doing some incredible things in space. I can't even imagine the things that we could do. And you know, the universes that we could explore. Yeah. Hammers in space, I'm so yeah. Excited. I'm so excited. And these things that seem like far off dreams, like I always have to check myself and my disbelief and exert like that real like belief in the fourth principle of unity that we are leaders and an endless faith in the masses. Because if you had told me three years ago, let me get the timing right. I joined about two and a half years ago. But if you had told me at the beginning of the pandemic, we were gonna pass out a, mil a million masks, that would sound as crazy to me as us going to space. But we did it, like shout out Chief Pima for real, like the real GOAT, like the most knowledgeable person about COVID-19 on this earth, like period. And seeing colonized people's brilliance, like there's no like can't in my vocabulary anymore. Like I know we're gonna go to space. I just don't know how soon. A lot of that depends on how much y'all about to donate in this fundraising portion. If y'all wanna see us go to the moon, explore space, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I see Chief Afani in the comments. Me and Chief Afani gonna be out there twerking on the little the little walk when you go out in the thing and you're like in your suit. We're gonna be out there like, hey. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to see some more donations come in. Yeah, not only twerking on the moon, but it's working to soundtracks uh, developed by Mad, you know, making the absolute like space, space music videos. I can't even believe what we could do up there. That is so cool. Just floating around. <laughs> I want to see like a dollar. Come on, can I get a dollar for uh, space music videos? <laughs> We are almost exactly, well, we're a little over halfway there. We're at $256. So we need, oh my God, Chief Felix, please help me. You're way better at math. I think that's uh, that would be 244. 240. Is that right? 254, is that what you said? No, 244. 244. <laughs> Y'all, I failed math. Like I, I'm not good at math. But yes, let's see those reparations <laughs> of alien comrades. And meanwhile, on our earth, like this water project, we, this is not just for within our organization or within our chapters. This is something we want to decentralize and push out to every colonized person on this earth, teaching them how to build them for themselves, build up self-determination. So we want to see those donations. If y'all are excited for this coding academy that Chief Bati and Comrade G and Comrade Rohan and all the new comrades in IT are about to bring y'all, I want to see that. And Chief, I can't believe I forgot Chief Lee and the brilliant Chief Lee. Um, we want to see that. We want to see those donations come in. Um, our liberation is something we have to work hard for. And a lot of these, um, it's not just working hard, but also seeing our brilliance and like taking our resources away from the colony. Thank you so much, $5 from Chief Oju, um, because anything other than donating to the revolution, you're just putting those that resource back into the colony to sustain itself. Like, that's a no-go, like, it's not gonna work. And these parts are expensive. Like, a lot of the parts for the water um, filter are not super, super cheap. Um, and a lot of them, we we really need um, to, to, we wanna work on um, using the 3D printer to 3D print the holder for some of the filters. We gotta buy the filaments for that too. Um, so let's see those donations come in. Chief Felix, yeah. how are you feeling? 
Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I was just going to say what you were saying, Chief. So we are trying to 3D, 3D print some of these parts, um, trying to source some of those filaments ourselves because we know that we have the brilliance, the colonized brilliance, to be able to do that. Um, so that is exactly what your money is going toward. Um, and also those code academy, um, those coding camps that we're going to be doing. I know the minute that we get these rolling out to everyone, I can't wait to see the incredible things, the incredible games uh, that all our hammers are going to be making. The, uh, I think it's the Beer Revolutionary game. I'm so excited to see that. Um, it's been really fun to see that progress to see the amazing things that we can do. And again, just to remind all colonized people what science can be for the people, because there's no other place that's doing it like Black Hammer and like SciTech. Because um, like Chief Sub was saying, it's not just for us, for Hammers, but it's also going to be for all colonized people worldwide, because we know the colony is destroying us everywhere. It doesn't exist just in this single point. It's a destructive field that affects us from everywhere. Um, and the only way that we can fight against this is if we put our money into revolution, put our money uh, towards science for the people to make sure that we live another day to fight for the revolution. We can do that with these water filters. Uh, we can do this with these uh, coding camps. So I want to see a few more donations come in, please, for the science that we're doing, the incredible revolutionary science that we're doing. For real. And uphold the leadership of Chief Felix, who is Oh, thank you so much, F you with $10. I think I know who that is. Um, uphold the leadership of Chief Felix and myself and all the other comrades who can't do this work that we are really, really passionate about. We're really serious about building up dual scientific contending power. People are scared of science because they only see it when it comes in the form of drone bombs and poison water to kill them. We need to like repair our relationship to even what science is. And a lot of this is gonna show the colonized masses what science can be when it's used for the people. So I wanna see those donations. I wanna see those reparations too. Y'all know you owe, pay what you owe. Um, and also, if you can't donate right now, sharing again is perfect. Now is the perfect time to share because they can go back and watch the whole video and then you're pulling them in right at the donation. So if you want to drop a hashtag share, if you shared, um, if you weren't able to donate or even if you want to donate and share, we're definitely not going to say no to that. Chief Felix, do you want to talk a little bit about what it's been like being in SciTech? Because I know for me, it was transformative, like being in colonial academic science spaces for my whole life. This is it's so different. <laughs> Oh yeah, I would absolutely say transformative. Unlike anything I've ever done, I really feel like I'm connecting with science. I know what science can do. I feel like, like people were saying earlier, like not only do we not know what the universe is, you know, like um, because colonizers are trying to take that away from us, um, but we also don't even know like what the true power of like our minds are and the science that we can do. And the questions that I want to ask that can be answered with science, but that the colony isn't interested in asking, uh, because why would they be interested um, in doing science that would directly affect us, that would be good for us? So. Um, like we keep saying, oh, I'm seeing hashtag share. Thank you so much, Black Aqua Yo. Um, keep sharing if you can. Um, but yeah, absolutely transformative. Um, my mind just hasn't stopped worrying. I mean, even science, I remember Chief Lee was like, I thought I didn't like IT, but it turns out I just didn't like doing it for the colony. And like, that's how I feel about everything um, on the colony <laughs> is like, it's absolutely terrible. It rips everything out of you. You think it's the worst thing ever. And then you're like, oh, this can actually be really helpful when in the right hands and when you do it, at Black Hammer and in SciTech um, and in, you know, a revolutionary organization. I 100% unite. And it's like a form of the science they force you to practice on the colony is like self immolation. It's like self mutilation because you know it's going to be used for your genocide. This is the most empowering thing I've ever done. Like I'm doing what I love and it's for my people. Um, but yeah, let's see those donations. Let's see those reparations. Y'all, how about, <laughs> this would be fun. Go to Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Melinda Gates. Um, what's the other one with the egghead? I don't know his name. The alien looking at uh, Mark Zuckerberg, all of their Twitters. Drop these in the comments of their BS tweets. I don't know. I'm not talking about one in particular. They're all BS because they're all liars. And drop them in there and demand reparations from them um, for what they have done to this world and the way they use science. Also, none of them actually even do science. They pay other people and they steal their ideas and sometimes they don't pay them. Yep, they are all liars and they all owe us money. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. <laughs> it is that really simple. Need to say. <laughs> And it's crazy to watch them be like, oh, we're going to the moon. And then it's like, those are all of our stolen resources. And you're using it for the, if you want to, you, we know why they won't, but what they could do is like, why are you trying to go to the moon? Like you could just solve world hunger. Like 
And of course, we know why they're not going to do that. But it's ridiculous. But yeah, we got any more? Uh, John and Hank Green. I don't know who that is. I know who that is. I don't like them at all. Yeah, they do always reparations, though. I can't stand their videos. Oh, God. People were tagging them on, um, yeah, people were tagging them, and yeah, I don't like their videos. It made that you terrible. Know what? I don't even want to talk about them. I was going to say something so you would know who they are, but. I guess I'm very lucky I haven't seen anybody. You know who owes reparations? Bill Nye. Yep. <laughs> Can I get that in the com comments? Hashtag Bill Nye pay up. Also, not to toot our own horn, but I feel like this was better than Bill Nye's show. Yeah, we're more interesting. That's all I have to say. Like, it's just that's again. Um, I feel like, you know, when colonize people be science, it's really just that simple. We're more interesting. We can talk about it. Um, colonize, it's, it's so unbelievably challenging. They try and actively kick us out of it. It's like, why are you trying to take us away from science? Like, this is our science. You can't do this without us. <laughs> yes, hashtag Bill Nye pay up. Absolutely. I'm loving all these hashtags. Come in. Come on, Bill. Yes, come on, Bill. He's going to be so confused. <laughs> like, he's going to be like, what is going on? <laughs> Hopefully, we get those Bill Nye reparations. I don't care if he doesn't know what's going on. Just send us the money. <laughs> Open your wallet, Bill Nye. I bet he's rich AF. Like, oh. I bet he's loaded from all that show money. And I'm sure just like the reruns, people still buying the DVDs or whatever. People still make merch. We have merch, by the way. We Check out, have. you know, Black Hammer Bazaar. Yeah. I got a lot of their stuff. Their stuff is so clean and so fresh. I like the aim for the head shirt that Chief Gun made. That's my favorite. Bill, where are the bills? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are so brilliant. <laughs> Bill, where are the bills? I love it. The mail guy. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. I love these hashtags so much. Love Bill Nye the mail guy. Chief Ozu <laughs> undefeated. Chief Ozu is hilarious. All right. Well. We're coming up toward the end of the show. We just want to thank everyone so much from tuning in, from tuning in, for tuning in. Um, and we will be moving forward, um, going through a lot more topics. We're going to have some like special guests on the show from the SciTech committee. We're looking at a bunch of topics. We want to talk about the dabs for sure, um, because that's some BS. We want to talk about, you know, string theory is one that's been thrown around that could be super cool. I know Chief Felix and Chief T want to uh, do a math episode. Chief Felix, what would you even talk about on a math episode? Oh, what wouldn't I talk about on a math episode? The possibilities are endless. Oh my goodness. I have to narrow it down. I'm too excited about a math episode. Whatever it is, it's going to be absolutely incredible um, because I just know we're going to give y'all a really great show. So I don't know. Stay tuned for that. I don't want to, maybe I don't want to spoil it quite yet. It'll be no spoilers. No. <laughs> But for real, thank y'all so much. Um, thank y'all so much for coming. Um, this has been really fun. I love the comments. Um, it's super cool to look at this stuff. It's stuff I feel like if it weren't for the show, I wouldn't have had time to really deep dive into. So I definitely enjoyed it. Um, and so I think to wrap up, we're going to head into some announcements from uh, all the great stuff we have going on in the Black Camera organization. This is not our only show. It's not our only event. Far from it. We have mad shows and events. So Hard Target is coming up this Friday, July 9th at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I know they're going to be talking about the assassination of the sellout Moise. He had blood on his hands. So was it the DAA? Was it the U.S.? Um, what does this mean politically for the Haitian masses and the revolution? So check that out Friday. So tomorrow. And this is a super cool show because it's from Black Hammer Times and they study like they study this stuff. That's what they have to do to push out an article every single day. Definitely go check out Black Hammer Times if you haven't, if you aren't already reading it. It's the only new place I get my news from because, you know, the news is always biased, but sometimes they'll lie to you and say that they're not biased. Black Hammer Times is 100% transparent. They're like, we are biased towards you for your liberation. Um, and these are the people that do Black Hammer Times um, that uh, make... Uh, the uh, Hard Target show too. So it's super exciting. I like watching it. I always watch it. And it's a real anti-colonial spin on like current events and news and all of that stuff. Are we able to go to the next slide? The book trap. We got Chief Oju, who y'all saw in the comments and Sergeant Bear reading, Bearing My Heart at Wounded Knee, looking into the history of indigenous struggle for liberation and what we as colonized People can really learn from it and where we can take on it and how we can advance that struggle and win uh, liberation for indigenous African and colonized people. This is also mandatory. 
So if you're in Black Hammer, you better be there with your read that back. Sunday, July 11th, 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Get your coffee, get your whatever it is you do in the morning. Do it with the book trap. Then my favorite show is Oh My God, It's so good. They're in a whole new location. There's so many more comrades on there now. Um, Monday, July 12th, 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. If you want Ghazi and the crew to break something specific down, make sure to email them at askallmygazi at gmail.com, and they will look at the topics, decide what they want to discuss. It's such a good show. They talk about everything under the sun, and it's all from an anti-colonial revolutionary lens. I really love that show. And then, of course, we have our weekly Tuesday rally. Again, mandatory if you're a Black Hammer member. Um, and our theme this week is we must lead each other out of the colony. Understanding that you can't leave the colony as an individual. And furthermore, we were never meant to live as individuals. Colonized people have always lived as a collective and talking about how we lead each other out of the colony into the revolution. July 13th, you know the deal. Every single Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Don't even have to say it, but make sure you get your VIPs in. This is going to be a super dope rally. And then, of course... What do you know? <laughs> we do have a show. Don't know if you've heard of it. And no, I'm just kidding. Um, Critical Mass will be back next Thursday. Same time, same place. And we will be discussing um, the same type of science stuff. i um, not sure what our topic will be yet. But it's going to be super interesting. It'll be me and Felix again. Maybe with a special guest. You have to come to find out. And finally, I don't know if this is finally, we do so much stuff, I never know. But this is also mandatory. Forging the Hammer is this uh, is the end of July, Sunday, July 25th at 3 p.m. Eastern. Go ahead and put it on your calendars. Forging the Hammer is where we as an organization come together as an entire organization and apply that collective brilliance by doing a deep dive into um, political education and study um, to sharpen ourselves to be better servants of the people. Also, our DMX single is released. I'm sure y'all saw the live stream that was earlier today. This is amazing. Like, like seriously, MLG Sundiata, Chief Ahi, Chief Dio, and Chief Indu really showed out with this. I love DMX. Um, I've always loved DMX. It's Dark and Hell is Hot is one of my favorite albums of all time. They really did justice to his memory and politicized the fact that white power killed him. Like, this was a attack by the state on an African colonized man who was searching really just for belonging his whole life and fell into all sorts of the most awful traps the colony has set up for us that ultimately took away his life. It's also hard, like it's a fire song. Like the beat is banging, like the, the verses are there. They, they're political, but they're also just like the flow, the, it's on point. Y'all make sure to stream it. Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, Bandcat. I don't know what L-U-M is, but it's on there too. Make sure to really run that up and it's a beautiful song. It's a beautiful song. Finally, if you are the type of person pictured in this picture, uh, join our reparations for it. Go ahead and wash the blood off your hands. It's the only way you can be on the right side of history. Fall under colonized people's leadership. Y'all have been, you know, the saltines, the males, the toilet seat complexion individuals, the hueless hooligans, whatever you want to call it. You know you effed up this entire world. You know that you live off stolen land, lives, labor, and resources. And if you want to watch that build up your hand, hands and really learn also, like, you don't know history. Like, everything you're taught in colonial schools is fake, and you're never going to hear the real because... Uh, you're white. Like you don't need to. Like they're not gonna tell you that. They're gonna hide it from you, so you're more comfortable in your whiteness or whatever. So it's actually a really good learning experience. Like you can learn what you've been lied to about your entire life. See the fullness of the atrocities that have been committed in your name across the globe for 600 years, and do something about it. And finally, most importantly of all. Now that we're done talking about them, if you are colonized, you know what I mean. African, Asian, indigenous, melanated, got, you know, just lit, lit. If you are colonized, you need to join Black Hammer today. We are serious about the liberation of our people. We are serious about using science for the liberation of our people. Um, Chief Felix, you want to talk about a little bit about why you initially joined Black Hammer and like where you're at today? Yeah, absolutely. So a little earlier I said I joined January of this year. Um, so yeah, it has been like a whirlwind, I feel like seven months. And I was looking for a place that 
was for colonized people, a place where I could do revolutionary science in a place that I feel like was doing something that like no one else was doing, which is like all of these incredible departments, all these shows that you just walk through and these announcements, um, all the development that we put into like all of our hammers. I was looking for a revolutionary collective, a collective that did a little bit of science and occasional, occasionally. Um, so when I heard about SciTech, when I heard about Hammer, I was like, okay, this is awesome. I signed right up and you should too. Uh, you see the join link right down there. <laughs> yeah, so especially if you want to do science, we say it all the time, we do not need paper from these institutions that have stolen science from us from the very beginning um, to join SciTech. People come to us all the time like, oh, I don't think I can do this. And it's like, that's the colonizer in your head telling you that. We didn't tell you that. We that. come do science with us. Uh, so if you are interested in science, if you um, are interested in any of the ideas that we talked about, any of the water filters, the projects, the IT team, all the incredible work that we do, um, incredibly revolutionary science, you should join SciTech. And you just email us that. If you're already a member, just email us at uh, bhoscitech at protonmail.com. And if you're not a member, you need to become a member so you can join us and get in on any of these amazing, incredible, profound projects and really like make history. Like it's wild to be sometimes late at night, like before bed, I'll be thinking like, wow, we like are making history. Um, I, it's wild. Like these water filters, these IT projects, even stuff like this show, I don't know if there's another show out there that does science in an anti-colonial revolutionary um, way. And it's, it's, it's crazy to think about that we are the people that are, as a collective, coming together to say no more to 600 years of genocide and ushering in a world where no one lives at the expense of another. I wouldn't trade being in Black Hammer for literally anything in the world like no crumbs from the colony could ever compare to the feeling of waking up every day and serving your people and going to sleep knowing you gave your all to the revolution for the liberation of your people even just for the feeling of that is enough to join like even without all the like cool stuff you get to do once you're in here yes absolutely all right well we are about to dip but before, I wanted to thank everyone so much because we have raised $306 for the use of science to liberate our people, which is incredible. This is going to help so much for the Water Project. It's going to help so much for the 3D printer. It's going to help so much with the Coding Academy and all of our IT projects. Um, and yeah. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Please, again, tune in next week for some more incredible revolutionary science. Um, and with that, I guess we'll just close down off with some land back. Land back. Land back.